What is up there everybody? Citrus Aviation here for yet another video and today we have massive unboxing at number 7 and this will be from just one box. This one right here from the R and Model Store. There are 20 models inside and I just want to start from this angle just to show you guys how huge this unboxing is going to be. Uh, this, this unboxing is almost uh, about 2,000 the height of the nightstand. It's on about 2,000 the width and the depth. Actually, it's almost the same depth as the nightstand. So, this is a gigantic box. And uh, with that being said, we're going to get started with unboxing the box. Alright, let's get started. And uh, we've got quite a box here. We've got basically everything in here uh, for commercial airline collectors. We got new releases from NG Malls and Journey Jets. We have old releases going all the way back to 2008. We've got regional jets, we've got narrow bodies, we've got wide bodies, we got 1-200 models, 1-400 models. Basically everything that you can imagine that someone might have in their collection is probably in here, at least for model aircraft. We don't have any accessories in here that I know of, but we have 20 aircraft. And uh, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a big box. This was $931 for this order. So yeah, it's pretty cheap, right? Okay, it's, it's pretty expensive. All right, let's get this to open. There we go. Move the scissors. I'm so excited! Alrighty. Uh, let's get started. Alright. Now, the art model store sent this package to me. There's like six different orders in here that I've had for months. And so, he said he would sip them in a sipping container, like how Giant Jets sends their models. So, let's take a look. This is just like apparently how the retailers send their model aircraft. So, we got our first several here. And so you can see how the retailers, they sit in boxes with a lot of sub boxes inside as well. So, we're gonna start off here with the NG Models April release Lufthansa Airbus A330 300. We've got a German Jet Delta Boeing 737 800. This is the old release, the 2008 one. Here, we got the new Giant Jets April release, uh, Royal Jordanian 7878. This is a model I've been interested in for quite a while, and Giant Jets finally released one. So that's our first set. Oh, and we got multiple different brands too. We got uh, some 80s and 400 stuff in here as well. Now, I realize that technically the retailers can't sell these anymore thanks to the uh, cease and desist, but I bought this model like back in February, so it was before I that cease and desist letter came out, so this will be in here. We have the Aviation 400 Delta A350. All I need to do now is just get the um, Joint Jets one and we can do a comparison video. Here we have, next in line, the FedEx MD-11F, model I've needed for quite some time. Um, I've been looking for a FedEx md and this one, oh I'm super hyped about this, my first one to 400 scale Airbus A380. This is the Emirates Airlines A380 in the standard livery. This box is different too. It's got like this really nice uh, seek finish to it, which I like. And this is a box that Joe just does for all the Emirates models and they sell these uh, at the official Emirates store as well. Then in here is another model I'm very excited about, but we're gonna have to move this box to get to it first. Let's move this one, and then we got in here just some packing paper. We got the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700, one 200 scale classic livery with the flaps down. I'm super excited about this one. As I with all of these, to be honest. And then we have a final little box in here. Uh, both these boxes have models in them, so let's move this big box aside. And we'll get some more boxes. These are all the boxes that you see come from the manufacturers. Usually they'll have four or five or six of a specific model in them. And usually they'll have on the side what it is, like right here. 
Uh, but I do have individual models in each of these. Alright, let's unpack these. Gonna need some more tape cutting equipment, such as a scissors. Always use safety when you are opening these. Alrighty, we got that open. And in here, we've got some... Oh, the gold strings, yeah! Okay, we got some 1-200 models in here. We are going to start with the Nike Air Gulfstream G550. This is in the white and black livery. We got the um, Calm Air CRJ200 in the ASA livery. I flew one of these from Pensacola to Atlanta. Uh, it was in the uh, Colors of Motion livery, but this is, you know, kind of close enough. We have the Northwest Airlines 757-200. Again, I ordered this all the way back in like February, so don't worry, this was non-illegal. Sales a perfectly legal one. I just decided to wait to have a sip until now. We next have the second Nike Air Gulfstream G550. This is in the black, white, and orange livery. And we still have a couple more in here. We have the Continental Airlines 757-200. Got this recently for a good deal, had a restock, I believe this is a 2018 release. And finally, the sixth model in here is this Nike Air Gulfstream G550. This one is in more of a, like a standard Gulfstream livery, uh, as far as like the livery and the box, so that's really cool. So for people who want to do just like generic Gulfstreams, this is a cool model for that purpose. There we go, there's six models in there. And let me just move this so it's not Looking like Dr. Tip over. And then we have one last box here. So far, all these have come in really nice shape. Uh, our models did a great job putting the fragile stickers on the box to ensure none of them were damaged. Here we go. We have the last section of the box. I have these uh, tilted up so you guys can see them better. But he said he packaged them just like how retailers do. So. First off, we have the American Eagle CRJ-900 by Jerry Jets. This was the um, May, April release. Yeah, this is my, this would be the last of my April releases. Um, United Airlines 737-700, the split skimmy toys, Star Alliance livery. I've seen this aircraft at Raleigh Dome. I'm really excited to have a model of it. And that was a May release for NG Models. Here we have an April NG Models release. Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 900 in the One World. I have the standard livery version of this model coming as well, but that'll be in massive unboxing number eight. Here we have the Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 800 in the spirit of Seattle livery. This is the Boeing House Slant Alaska Airlines hybrid livery. We have another Alaska Airlines model. This is the Honoring Those Who Solve Boeing 737-800. Great model. I've seen good things about this one. I'm excited to have it. We have the United Airlines Boeing 737-700 in the Evil Blue livery. This is a new release. Another May release. This is my last of the May releases. I did buy five of them. If you include the uh, Nike Air G550 as a restock. And uh, yeah, just take a look at that pile of boxes. Oh my, that is a lot. <laughs> Alrighty, it is now time to unbox these models one by one. And I'm gonna move a couple of these piles out of the way for the moment. And we'll get started with the Southwest 737-700. Which uh, this one, is one of the ones I'm most excited about, even though I think every single one of these I'm really, really excited about. But we're gonna get started Southwest, of course, wrapped in that typical Jim I Just paper. We'll remove the paper. There we go. And we'll put the box here on the table. This is a standard Gemini 200 box. As you can see, the gold lettering it looks so cool. As you can see, I believe it says flaps down. Yep, that new flaps down sticker that I haven't seen on a 1200 model yet because I haven't gotten one yet. But now I have. So, 
Also, I believe this also comes with an improved stand, so I'm really excited to see that. But I haven't gotten one of these 1200 mainline aircraft in quite a while, and uh, immediate disappointment as uh, we get the El Cheapo stand with this one. But hopefully, on some of my other 1200 purchases, we will get the proper stand. And there is the model inside. So let's lift the packaging and take the model out by the tail and then by the fuselage. And, uh, oh, nose gears in there somewhere. Let's put this down carefully. That's an expensive model. We want to be nice to it. And here you go. Nose gear door. And there's something in here. Uh, we have gear replacement doors are in here. These are if you want to put the model in the in-flight position. You can put these little things on where the gear doors are and uh, you can have the model in the in-flight position. So, we're not going to do that though because we're going to sew it on the ground. Although, uh, maybe also on the stand coming into land, that would look cool too. But, let's take a look at this one. Let's put the uh, gear back in. This is supposed to be magnetic, so hopefully this time they've improved the magnetism because last time with well, the last several 737s I've had, they've been pretty bad. You can see the uh, rotating nose gear, which rotates about 90 degrees, which is about correct for a 737-700. Got the lineage slats and the trail lineage flaps extended. They look really nice. So we'll take a closer look at that, but from right off, it looks fantastic. And there's even a gap here between the flaps and the axle uh, wing, which is super cool. We don't get that in the 1400 version, but the 1201 does. So we'll put that back in the corner there. And then, uh, what if we do? Yeah, let's do all the 1200s to start with. So we'll do the Nike AR Golf Streams next. Look at that, three Nike Air Gulfstreams, and I did order the new release, June Nike Air Gulfstream. So I will have all four of them. And um, these were on two separate aircraft. So initially this aircraft was delivered to Nike Air in 2006, and then they got this second aircraft later, I want to say 2011 or so. Then that aircraft got repainted into this livery. And this aircraft got painted into the black and green livery that you'll see in a future unboxing. Mass unboxing number eight, most likely. So, let's start with the rather standard looking livery. Because this is the one that most of you are probably going to be interested in. It doesn't have the as overtly Nike branding to it. And so a lot of people are going to buy this because this looks like a generic Gulfstream. And this is also my first look at the NG Models Gulfstream mold, which I'm excited about. Looks good from a first impression. Let's lift this up and move the aircraft. I want to be really careful of this. Wow, that looks super cool. Wow. Ah, I love how golf streams look and this one looks super special. These things are also gigantic aircraft. Uh, let me just bring over the Boeing 737-700 for scale. Like they're actually really close in size, which a lot of people don't realize. The, the G550 is smaller than the 737-700, but I'd say it's about the size of a CRJ900, maybe even a Boeing 717. So the Gulfstream G550 is a pretty large aircraft. We'll put the box aside and we'll get the second Gulfstream. So we'll get the white one. This is a much more overtly Nike brand as you can see these two. Um, and so, therefore, probably not as many people are going to get these, but the first run of this one did sell out really quickly on pre-order. And I was able to get the second run, which I believe also sold out on pre-order. So there is quite a bit of demand for Nike AL Gulfstream G550s. Hopefully, if NG Models get the G650 mold, we'll get the Nike AL G650. And here is the white and black G550. Looking super cool there. I love this livery. I like all the, the Nike Air G550 liveries, but uh, this one is, this one's really good. 
then we will get the orange G550, which is the newer paint scheme of the same aircraft, uh, November 1972 November. And this aircraft though was recently retired from the Nike AR fleet and replaced with a Gulfstream G650. Which has a similar livery but a different orange livery. It's a bit more like orange red instead of like bright orange. And this time the protective paper is underneath the model which is very interesting. Wow, look at that. Look at how cool that livery is on the underside. And it has like running suit things, like the treads of running suits on the other side. I love this. Look at that. Wow. I've never been so impressed and surprised by a model before. <clears throat> Look at that. NG models. That is fabulous. That's nothing so incredible right there. Take a look at that. That's gonna be a nice addition to the fleet. I'm gonna put that on a stand for soy. And then we have one last 1200 model. This is the Delta ASA CRJ200. We're gonna actually need to put these back here. Look at those G550s. Now this looks like a high-end private jet airport with Delta connection, of course. Atlantic Southeast Airlines CRJ200 in the Delta Ron Allen paint scheme. Opening it up just like a typical engine model one to a box. I'm gonna be very careful to take this out. That is really nicely packaged, and that model looks fantastic. This is my third NG Models CRJ200, and of course, it is in 1 to 200 scale. Looks fantastic as usual. As far as I can tell, these have all come in fantastic conditions with nothing broken. So, NG Models seemingly has fixed their issues they had with the gear falling apart. But look at that, Kame of CRJ200, Atlantic Southeast Airlines livery. Alright, so next we are going to move to the 1400 models and I just have to say that I'm blown away at how amazing the NG Models Gulfstream G550 mold is. It is the best 1200 mold I've maybe ever seen, particularly for that size of aircraft, the best one I've seen. Really, really nice job for NG Models. So, we next have some 1400 scale models to look at. We're going to start here with one that I have unboxed before. This is the American Eagle CRJ900. This is my third and final one. And my 15th CRJ900 in my collection. So, let's take a look at it. It looks to be basically the same as all the other ones with the typical uh, Gemini Jets of quality issues. Made in China, the quality isn't there. All right, so there is the last model. I'm very glad I added third one to my fleet. And yes, I will be using these for my airports. And, and I'm very glad I have three because you know maybe I'll do Sarlet sometime. Who knows? Alrighty, let's do some of the NG Malls 737 at Das 700s and 800s next. Uh, we'll put the 900 in here too, but we've got uh, five of them here. So I think we'll start with the 700s and we'll work our way up to the larger aircraft. So we got two 700s, so let's do the Starlines first. This is actually my first look at the new NG Models 737-700 mold. So let's see what it looks like. So far it's so good, everything appears to be intact. That's good. Uh, no, no stand holes on these still. Uh, NG Models used to change that. There is the 700 Evil Glow. Looks good as well, in good shape. Oh, that looks gorgeous, really. Wow. Looks good so far. There are the two 700s. So let's do the two 800s. We got honor those who saw. This is a model I've been chasing after for quite some time. And I finally have added to the collection. There C is also in great shape as well. Mm. No SATCOM box. Uh, that is something interesting. Alaska doesn't generally put SATCOM boxes on their models. 
So that is definitely an interesting little fact for you. Or, or they, they, they might, but they put like really, really tiny ones. So they're not like the dome ones that you see on like Southwest United Delta. Alaska puts the really, really, really small sack on boxes. They kind of go right about here as like a little, they kind of go right about, let me see. Right about here as a tiny little strip. They're more like a satcom antenna, if anything. Then here is the Spirit of Seattle. Whoopsie, oh, we don't wanna. Got the windlet caught on the box there. Don't want that. All right, we're gonna move this and then we'll pull out the aircraft. This one also has split skimming towers, which is the preferred version of the delivery in my opinion. I think it looks really cool with the splits. And then we got our fifth and final 737S. This one is a 900. My other 900 in the standard delivery will come in mass unboxing eight. In fact, the box is here right now, but we're just doing this big box for mass unboxing at number seven. Uh, along in that package, we'll have the United Continental 737-700S and the Southwest Canyon Blue 737-700S. Wow, this looks good. I can feel the uh, the line between the cabin and the container space down there on, on the bulkhead. It's actually cool. Alright, so there are those aircraft and uh, let's actually take a closer look at these now. I realize I haven't taken a closer look at any of these. So let's uh, do these. We'll take a closer look at these and then we'll move on to the next models. Let's actually start with the 700. Start with the United one and we'll do the Star Alliance delivery. So here we go. United Star Alliance delivery. Got the United titles. Got the Star Alliance sale. And in case you guys wondered what that red line is for, I finally figured it out. And um, that line shows the maximum. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Uh, that line shows the maximum amount of turn that you can do on a tug before you damage the landing gear. So the landing gear can turn only a certain amount. So on the 700, it's about 90 degrees to each side. You can turn the landing gear before causing damage. That line indicates to the tug operator where you have to stop turning. So we have the Star Alliance tiles, the beautiful Star Alliance tail, and the windlet which also has the Star Alliance logo on it. Really nice job, really nice job, Angie. And it shows on the inside of the winglet too, so that's super nice. Let's see how the underside of the mold looks. Looks pretty good. It doesn't quite have that uh, like three contour look, like that contoured look that the Panda one does. But it kinda, yeah, it kinda does a little bit. Not as defined as the Panda one, but still pretty nice. Uh, this is have Trying to look to see if it has that like little line that separates the cargo bin from the main cabinet. It's kind of there. You can kind of see it. But of course the 700 one is not pronounced. Here we have the Evil Globe 737 700S. This one looks very nice as well. Satcom box. All intents appear to be here. The um, Split skimming toys look really nice on this one. I think this is the best 700 splits I've seen so far. I'm gonna focus on that camera right here, right here. That looks, that looks, that's the best one I've seen. I think that's better than Panda. All right, next up we have the honoring those who saw. There's a seal on the front, and it says honoring those who saw. The last scale line is in the lower section. You can see here that little section between the uh, cargo bin area and the main cabin. Got the engines, got the blue wheel caps, really nice job. Got that like gold ring around the front of the engine. And then the split screen tiles are really nice details. You can see the American flag there, really nicely done. And does the inside windlet so that as well? Yes, it does. Really nice job, NG Malls. Even to sew the stars on there, which is very difficult to do. We go to the uh, red line that separates the white from the blue area. So you can see. Then we go to the Eskimo. Got the registration. Super nice job, Angie. This is a really nice model. Then we have the Spear of Seattle. 
can see this is basically the Boeing house livery with the Alaska Airlines title and the Eskimo which is also painted in the Boeing color scheme so I think that's a really cool aircraft and, I, and uh, really sweet that Alaska Airlines put that livery on their plane. Finally we have the Boeing 737-900 this is another new mold and I've seen some people have been interested in what the nose section looks like. So here's an 800 on the left and here's a 900 on the right. They look about the same, but there you can see on the 900, there's the last Airlines title, One World title, looks really nice. You see the One World Membo logo there now, which is really cool because Alaska Airlines is officially a member of the One World Alliance as of the 31st of March 2021. Cap windows, this one, does the 900 have, yes the 900 does have that section between main cargo bin area and the cabin. The engines look nice, the hack car box is great, we've got the emergency exit which on the 900 is on both sides as you can see. Registration, this is 434 Alpha Sierra and the tail which looks really nice as well. Move that up for you. So yeah this is another great model by NG Models and a great addition to the fleet. We'll just show you the CRJ900 while we're here. Carpet windows, American Eagle logo. We still have the same silver windlet problem and the tail section is still nice. Um, the engines look good. This time as you can see the horizontal stabilizers are not as tilted upwards on this one. Now I am still sewing this from an upper angle so they look straight but they're actually slightly tilted up just slightly but these aren't as bad for some reason on this one model so that's good. The windlets are still silver which that's still an issue uh, so yeah Joan Jet still got that off but it's an improvement and we'll take a closer look at the 1200 models so I'll just park these over here and then let's get to the 1200s. These I'm really excited about. Let's get better lighting. ASA, Atlantic Southeast Airlines, CRG 200, operating for Delta Connection. So, there we go. There is the aircraft. Does the wheel turn? Nope, it's just fixing in place. Here we have this is what's often called the Ron Allen paint scheme. Got the L1 door, Delta Connection. I actually kind of like this livery. I realize a lot of people didn't. But overall I thought it was pretty cool. You can see the operator there on the tail, Alpha Sierra. And this aircraft is registered as 624 Alpha Sierra. I flew one of these from Pensacola to Atlanta. It was a Colors of Motion aircraft back in 2006. But we did see these fly in to Pensacola as late as I think 2006 when the last one in these paint scheme was finally painted. All right, we'll save the Gulf Streams for last, and we'll do the classic, Southwest Classic by Gemini Jets. See the nose there? Did they get the cockpit windows right on the 1201? The engines, the engines look really good. Uh, there does appear to be a little issue here with the engine cowling on mine on this side. Both all looks good. Let's focus on the. Carpet, come on. Yes, that does look correct. Good, Gemini Jets. Thank you for getting that correct. You do have the carpet windows right. You can see the jewel light there for the uh, taxi light. You can see that just kind of flickering there. These do turn. For some reason, this turn up 90 degrees to the right and only about 70 degrees the other way. So far, I'm not having any issues with my landing gear on this one, so that's good. Sometimes I've had the issues in the past with 700 molds from from Gemini 200. Let's focus that back. Here we go. Straighten up this nose gear. And we'll go down the aircraft. Uh, it looks pretty good from first glance. The red hubcaps. The SATCOM box. Southwest. Got some more antennas. Of course, here's what you're interested in the flaps down. Of course, the aircraft is cool too, but a lot of people are interested in the flaps down part. These look very realistic. As you can see, there's a little gap between the flaps and the wing as the axle 
flaps would look like when they're extended. The detail on it's pretty good. Here's the detail on the other side, really nicely done. Lean edge slats have great level detail as well. So yeah, pretty good job of Jeremy just to use the JC Wings mold. Of course, there is a lot of wing flex on this, so that's a bit disappointing. But overall, this model looks really nice. I believe the fan blades spin as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with my version of that aircraft. Here we have the Gulfstream G550. We've got the nose. I love how the landing gear on these are actually kind of like slanted forward a little bit. It's really cool. I'm trying try to see if these move. Nope, they don't. They're fixed in place. Got your forward antennas on both the upper and lower section of the fuselage. Got the windows and you got the two emergency exits right there over the wing. There is an escape route shown there. Got the main gear and you have the engine. There is the registration 3546. Got another antenna in the back and then you got your tail section. This is a gorgeous aircraft. This mold also is really well balanced by NG models too. Here we have the second Gulfstream. This is uh, what is that, 1972? I believe so. Yeah. Alright, so this is the white one. As you can see, it's cock windows, PL2, city ports, a lot of things shown here. And there's like a little like notch here on the underside of the aircraft, which I believe is for some sort of sensor. But anyway, you can see the L1 door, the cock windows, very white aircraft, this one with the black Nike swoosh and the like little black section where the registration is. And then we move to the orange one which actually is the same aircraft and believe it or not it actually sails the liver of the white one except they added the orange and black sections here on the fuselage engines and the rest of the aircraft but here you can see tail section this is the same livery that we saw previously the tail section is exactly the same they just added a lot of color to the rest of the livery so as you can see it starts orange a little like red and black then it just goes down the aircraft where this orange engine section has like this uh, red weave pattern on it that you can see on some of the Nike Air Maxes and some other of the Nike Suits. Of course the the wing is black too with the little black section of the suit on the underside. The out of the outside of the winglet is black and the inside of the winglet is orange, which is really cool. It's got this like cool pattern on it too. That is super nicely detailed. Great job, Angie Models. All right, so we will now continue with unboxing more of these gorgeous aircraft. Alrighty, we are back from a short little intermission and we have some more airplanes to unbox. We're gonna do some Angie Models 757-200s. We're gonna start here with this Northwest one. It's a super cool box design. They did some uh, really nice grains here, going from the red to the blue, all the way around the box. That can be difficult to get correct, but uh, NG did it. Looks really nice. I'm really excited to try this one out. And pulling it out of the box, and it looks beautiful. This will be a nice compliment to my Gemini Jets one, but obviously this one will be better than the Gemini Jets one because that model was made quite some time ago, and the NG model's mold is just simply better. There that we have the Continental Boeing 757-200. This one was with the wheelets and the Generation 2 registration November 17126. Also, the Continental ones are the only ones that United is currently flying. All their former United ones are currently in storage or retired. So this one's kind of called open. Let's try and get it here really well packaged. So here's the Continental one. Now this one doesn't have the plastic on the underside but it has this like a uh, paper here to prevent any objects from falling out which is good. This one looks really nice as well. The NG757 is a great mold. Considering that it was their very first mold it's really high quality for being their very first one. Jeremy Jeff Delta 737 800 this is the old release this is a 2008 yes 2008 release the continental here this one is a 2018 release so it goes back 
and Jim and Jeff's been making models since April 2018 and the Connell one was one of the first North American models NG models ever made so that was really cool. Here is the Delta plane. This is when Jim and Jeff's actually made aircraft without too much wind flex and the quality of the models was really good back then. Not exactly something you can say about them today. So let's take a quick look at these models. Probably having a little mountain of boxes over here to my side. We're gonna get started with the Delta, of course. Delta is one of my favorite airlines. This one here you can see the Delta titles, the Sky Team logo, got the information there on the gear doy, L1 doy, got the blue wheel caps, blue windlet, and there's a SATCOM box. So this was one of the first SATCOM boxes put on a model aircraft. Well, this one right here, and uh, at least the one for on a scale. And you can see it's tracing the tail. You can see the skid plate. It's a really nice mold. This old Joe and Jeff mold. This one has a scratch on it, I think. Yeah, it's not repeated on this side, so there's a scratch, slant, dent. This is a used model, as I mentioned. I bought this from the R model store as a used aircraft, but it's a decent price and just one scratch. It's not, not too bad. Yeah. Just one scratch there above the uh, overwing exits. Oh, that this model appears to be an excellent site. I've been hunting down the original release Delta 738 and now I have it. And so I'm just missing the two newer 738 releases from Jeremy Jeff, the 2018 and the 2020. I have the 2015 and now the 2008 one. Here is the Northwest Boeing 757-200. Get that to focus here in a sec. There we go. This one is gorgeous. Take a look at all this detail. We've got the Northwest tiles. We got some sort of blue logo there to the right of the uh, Northwest. You can see the American flag. You can just see the detail on this is beyond the German Jet one, which is super nice. Let's look at that. Look how amazing that is. Wow, look at that detail. You can see reflecting in the sunlight there. Look at all the detail on the horizontal stabilizer. Got the old Northwest logo. Really cool. I like this one's Bowling Sioux livery too. Which is a great Northwest livery. And then finally, we have the Continental Airlines 757-200. Here's the Continental logo and I believe that is the Sky Team logo there. I just realized something. This aircraft has tilting gear. Wait, since when did NG start putting tilting? Is it? Nah, it just kind of, it kind of tilts. Does Northwest do that? I'm just realizing this. Not really, don't really tilt, but the kind of one does seem to a little. Anyway, anyway, they were part of Sky Team, I believe. Sky Team of Star Alliance. I don't, I'm pretty sure they weren't part of the same alliance that United was, which was Star Alliance. But anyway, United basically just stole this paint scheme, put it on the livery. As you can see, it's classic Connell livery. Really nice job by NG Models again. That's the Connell Globe. Looks really good. You can use this as a United plane without issue. Alrighty, I'm gonna put those off to our right. And then we have the wide bodies. We've got quite a few wide bodies. We have one, two, three, four, five, six wide bodies. We're gonna get started with this. The Royal Jordanian 787-8 by Jeremy Jets. This is the new release from May 2020 or 2021. The box design is really nice on this one too. So let's unbox it and take a look at it. I'm really excited to see what this one looks like. As I've been wanting a Royal Jordanian model for a long time, I saw one at Chicago Hale in 2008. So I was taxiing in and we took the uh, taxiway route that went around Terminal I, the International Terminal. And there was a Royal Jordanian A340-200 there. Now of course, Royal Jordanian doesn't operate the A340 anymore, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna get a 787 and wanted to get one since I started collecting and now, here it is, a Royal Jordanian 787 has landed. I'm super hyped about this. Look at that, that beautiful, doesn't it? The Royal Jordanian livery has been unchanged for about 20 years. 
And this one looks really nice. I just love how, uh, you know, upscale it is. It definitely fits the royal part of the name of the Royal Jordanian Airlines. Next up, after that, we will have this uh, Lufthansa A330. I realize we're not going to have enough space on this uh, nightstand here, so I'm going to move every single model from this nightstand except for the Royal Jordanian 787, and then we'll continue unboxing the wide bodies. Alrighty, we are back, and here we go with the Lufthansa A330 300 by NG models. Nice looking box. It seems like Lufthansa wants model companies to do this silver packaging because they are all doing this. NG models generally just are doing the silver packaging, so it must be something required by license with the Lufthansa brand. So, opening the package up, moving the two, oh, two pieces of plastic on top. Here comes out this A330. I'm really excited for this because I've been trying to find the perfect model airplane. A model airplane that can give a 100 out of 100. And the Swiss A330 got a 99 out of 100. So maybe, maybe this one will get a perfect score. I've yet to give a perfect score to a model. And from false glance, it looks good. The only issue that I had with the Swiss was a quality issue. So we'll take a look at this one. We'll see if this one has any quality issues, and uh, if not, this model could be a perfect rated model. Right off, it looks good. NG Models does not do tilting gear, uh, but it looks good so far. The engine's my... Uh, I know the engine's about level, or about what needs to be. Vocal stabilizers look to be fine. So, I'm very excited to have the 30 I've been needing that for Atlanta and BCI. And, um, particularly as a lot of my Lufthansa aircraft don't give a tire. Then we have this, the big boy. My first A380 and 1 to 400 scale. Let's actually back up the camera so we can get a little bit better view. There we go. So that is a big box. Wow. And uh, for perspective, here's a typical joint just wide body box. Pretty small in comparison, about the same footprint, but not as tall. So, let's open this up. I'm super excited to have my very first 1400 A380. Oh my. Look at that beauty. It is gigantic. Oh, uh, uh, uh. take some force to move that out. The big mold. <laughs> Look at how big that A380 is. It's massive. I've never had an A380 before, so, really excited to try this joint. Just one. And then, Obviously, when Aviation 400 comes out with sales, I will get that one as well. It is very interesting that Joint just starts making the standard livery Emirates A380 right after Aviation 400 announces they are going to make an A380. I, I don't think that's a coincidence, but here we go. Got that off. I'll take this plastic seat off. I'm going to lift by the tail carefully until we can grab the few slots. <sighs> okay, there's, there's one of these tab this has one of those tabs right here to keep the aircraft from just coming out, but I want to be super careful because I don't want to break this model. It would really suck to get an MH A3 just for it to be broken right after you get the model. Alright, we'll lift by the nose I guess. There we go. I'm always super guessed out while doing that. Oh, and it's uh, attached on the wings too. Alright, if they could come up with a better method of like holding that in place, that'd be cool. But, we got out. That thing's heavy too. Let me lift that again. Wow, that's like two, three pounds. Which is heavy for a model aircraft. Alrighty. Looks really nice from first glance. Are the antennas on it? Let me take a look. Just look at here behind the camera. Two, three. No antennas on the other side, typical giant jets, but there are three up top. Wow. That is a beast. Wow, this A3 is as big as people say it is. All right, we're moving this uh, whale of a jet off to the side. And the A3 looks so much better in person, in my opinion, than it does in pictures, because the A380 in my opinion, not the most beautiful aircraft, but you know, it is what it is. Alright, next we have the FedEx MD-11 from the uh, April Jimmy Jets releases. Or, uh, yeah, April. April, yep. 
Okay, that came out really fast. <laughs> oh, used a bit too much force, just like uh, it feels that the A3. But anyway, all right, nothing happened, but we got it out. We got our fourth and final of the NG models or Gemma Jets April releases. FedEx MD11. I do like the Gemma Jets MD11 mold, it's pretty solid. And this will be my fourth Gemma Jets MD11. I have two UPS ones in the old and the new little. Got a KLM MD11, which I really like. And then I got this. Which is the FedEx MD11, one that I've been needing for quite some time. And uh, I really like it. I do need a FedEx 767 though, and 75 of course. But take a look back. I really like the detail underneath here where the gray kind of goes in the middle here. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, really good looking model. Put that over here. And we have two more wide bodies and they are the same aircraft. The Delta 850, we got the Aviation 400 one. And the NG Models one from July of last year. So this one, the Aviation 400 one, it sewed up has been able to be pre-ordered a year ago. And now it's finally here. So this is this is how long you can end up waiting for an Aviation 400 model, about a year. Same thing with JC Wings. But one of the things that we get spoiled by as collectors is not having to wait super long for model aircraft because Typically in diecast collecting, if you order something, you will have to wait a year for it. That's very typical with action figures, model cars, model railroads, that sort of thing. We got our plastic stand. These stands are, aren't that great in my opinion for AV400, but it is nice that they at least include one. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. We're gonna get the item that we are interested in, which is the actual model. We'll pop that one out. And uh, oh, we got some tape to deal with, that is fine. We will deal with the tape. Try not to unmove the stand. And then we will get the aircraft out. It's starting to get a little stormy here right now. If you're wondering why the lighting is going in and out. Oh, this one has tilting gear. Tell that right away. You can see the jewel light there too. Super cool. This looks really clean, the tape 50 Wow. It's kind of heavy too. So that's nice. That's the Aviation 400 one. And then here we have the NG Malls one. I'm really excited to do a comparison between the NG Aviation 400 and Joint Jet one. Now this one is hopefully gonna come intact. My previous one had a wheel missing. So hopefully this one is just fine. All right, first glance, it looks okay. That's good. Good. All right, this one's fully intact. Won't need won't need to do any gluing here, which is great. And uh, I will be doing a comparison between the NG models, the AVC 400, AV50, along with the Gemini Jets Slant JC Wings one. I will be ordering a Gemini Jets A350 soon. My apologies there for the bump on the camera. And let's take a look at these models. We're going to take a close, in-depth look at the Gemini Jets, uh, Gemini Jets NG model and. Aviation 400 850s, both for Delta Airlines, of course. The Delta Airlines very quickly become my favorite airline in the world. So, I'm gonna start here at the nose, the cockpit windows, and the nose shape, which looks pretty good on the NG1. It just seems a little bit kind of like pushed in though to me, like it needs to be on a little bit longer or something. Got the L1, L2 door, got the Sky Team logo on each side, with the Delta titles. Got the antennas, engine, the gear, which do look nice on the NG1. Uh, although I do think that the longer one here on the, the longer one on the Giant Jets falls in is better. These seem a little bit too close. Um, we got the Delta widget on the winglet there. Let me get that focus. Yeah, there you go. You see the Delta widget. Then we got the registration. This one is November. What does the box say? November 512 Delta November. And then here we have the Delta widget, 
with the uh, fleet number up there on the top of the tail. The fleet number usually does include the registration but often has some other things in it as well. Alright, here is the Aviation 400 version. Now first off, I like this nose shape a lot better. I think it's better than the NG1, but it's, the NG1 is still good. I just think this one's better. We got the Dell titles. We got the jewel light up here. Got two more antennas. I just really like the shape of the Aviation 400 one. Super nice. Um, you can see the gear, in my opinion, a bit too close, I think, on the Aviation 400 one. The winglet, I think on this one is better. Let's do this. Yeah, I think that winglet shape is. I think the, the placement of the widget is better on that one. Got the SATCOM box, which both models have in the same place. Registration on this one's 503 Delta November. And then this one's also I just noticing the color's a bit darker. It's more like a, a deep purple. Instead of the NG one, I think they got the color correct. I think the Aviation 400 one's a bit dark. It looks like Air Classics coloring, to be honest. Alright, so there is that. Both models both look great, and I can't wait to do the comparison between the two. So let's move on to the Royal Jordanian 787. This one looks super nice as well. You can see the cup windows on this one are kind of this brownish color. So some of the 787s, they have this like um, filter almost like on the, the windows, which uh, provides more sun protection for the pilot. Got the L1, L2 door, got the Royal Jordanian titles, and then we have a believe Royal Jordanian in Arabic, right after the English titles. We got something written there, I believe it says, um, I don't know what it says in the red red text there, but it says something. And then we got the uh, beautiful livery, which is basically, we got this like a uh, deep gray color with a red cheat line and a gold accent line going down the aircraft. The engines are the dark gray with a um, like red section up top, it's like a red triangle or like a half circle or something. It looks really nice. It kind of helps to give this livery something to break up the just like gunmetal gray, which is super nicely done. Obviously, you can see the gold line gets smaller as the aircraft heads towards the back. Kind of makes it look like it's moving quickly. Got the flag of Jordan, Boeing 787 Dreamliner registration. And here we got the tail section with the gray and the like black streaks make it look like it's moved quickly. And then we got the red swoop up top. And then we got a crown there. I believe that might be the crown for the Royal House of Jordan. And then we have the Lufthansa Airbus A330-300 cap windows. The Lufthansa board got the L1 door. Got uh, the only yellow on the aircraft. It's not that little like yellow square next to the Boeing door. Got the Lufthansa titles. We have the Airbus A330, and then the name of the aircraft. Every aircraft in the Lufthansa fleet is named after a city, usually in Germany. I do not know which one this is. But uh, we got a lot of nice detail. Got the Rolls Royce engines, the white windlets. We got red antennas. Nice job on engine models to sew the red antennas. Uh, super nice job. Uh, got the both front and rear SATCOM boxes. Got the registration and the Lufthansa board, which I believe is a crane. All right, we are going to do the MD-11 next. And then we will do the A380 last, which I am, oh, I, I, I don't want to say I'm most excited for it, but I mean, because these are all great models, but I got to be honest, I'm most excited for the A380. I'm most interested in that. Here we have a FedEx MD-11. We got the classic MD-11 no safe, which does have a really long curvature on the lower section of the curve going to the bottom of the fuselage, as you can see. Got the cockpit windows, which are gigantic on the McDonald's Douglas MD-11. Got the L1 door. Uh, got uh, FedEx Express. I believe the slogan is the world on time, which I believe it does say. Yes, it does say that there on the nose. We got uh, the engines. We really do like how this purple color signs. 
here on the tail section. Got the FedEx titles there. And of course, GeoNGS does have a good MD11 mold. This is a good mold in my opinion. I really like the underside of this mold. Really nice job. The underside of the wing detail is actually pretty good. But anyway, that's that aircraft. Looks like the sun's finally coming out for the gigantic Airbus A380. There she is. What some people call the whale jet, but uh, it's an A380 Super Jumbo Jet. Now, some people like to critique this mold. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I think this is a pretty decent looking Airbus A380. And one thing I want to mention here, uh, I know I'm going off the beaten path, but the 787 is a two-piece wing. Like that. Gone is the ugly one-piece wing mold. We are now using the correct mold, the JC Wings two-piece one, and uh, not as much wing flex either. So nice job on Joe just for to get that right. But anyway, A380. A lot of people criticize this mold. So far, it looks pretty good to me. Maybe the nose shape is a little off and such, but it's pretty good. All right, now some people didn't buy this because they thought, oh, it's just another Expo. 2020 aircraft, but I can confirm that this is actually the standard livery because they're putting that Expo 2020 sticker on all of the aircraft. The, the beautiful Emirates titles in gold there. I believe that all is Emirates in Airbag, but I'm sorry someone could correct me. You can see the beautiful Emirates logos on the engine. Uh, let me actually focus that for you. Take a look at that. Really nice, isn't it? And then if we go down here, to the winglet. You can see the Emirates logo there as well. Really nice winglet. The Airbus A3 is just such a massive aircraft. Just take a look at how huge it is. There are three antennas. There's the third one back there. And uh, you need to move the Delta A350 to get some more space. This aircraft is gigantic. The APU is huge as you can see. Tail section is huge. Doesn't even fit on the camera screen. Just everything about this aircraft is magnificently gigantic. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can show you all the underside. And of course, Emirates was one of the airlines to start the trend of putting the name of your airline underneath the aircraft. I mean, just look at that. Just super classic. The wing detail looks to be pretty good. Uh, this wing here might be out slightly. Yeah, it's not in all the way. But... It's really good. Oh, 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 I was able to move that. Ah, uh, that's a problem. Yeah, it's not in all the way. So hopefully it doesn't fall out, but could be an issue. Uh, the center gear with the like, 777-esque like wheels don't want to really move on this side. But all the other gears, to just credit, do want to move. And uh, these gears do tilt as well, which is really nice. So. My initial impressions on the Jojets A380 are that it's actually pretty good. That is the last model in this massive unboxing. Uh, so that being said, we're now going to move on to some beauty shots to end this episode. I would really like to thank the R Model Store to end this video for his cooperation and being able to make this unboxing happen. There are quite a few orders that I mixed and combined to make this one going all the way back to February with that with the Delta 50 and the Northwest 752 all the way up to the NG models April May releases and the John Jets April releases so we would really like to thank him for his help with that making it possible and sipping the box in a way that the retailers actually get them because boxes that come like that that's how retailers get their models they get them like that they obviously don't get an assortment of just a bunch of random models they maybe get like six of one model ten of another but they come like that so this is really cool. I've been able to add quite a few models I've been looking for in the collection, like the uh, Emirates A380, the Royal Jordanian 787, the Nike Air Gulfstreams. I'm really excited to start my private jet 1200 fleet. That's something that I'm going to be growing. The uh, Southwest Classic is an awesome model. Obviously, it has some general jet quality issues, but I'm just really happy to have flaps down version of that aircraft. I'll be excited to put that on display. And yeah, that is basically it for this unboxing video. I hope you guys enjoyed this super massive unboxing of 20 aircraft, 
one two models I know that's that's a ton isn't it but we have 20 models and I want to thank y'all so much for joining me for this one so with that being said hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching have a great rest of your day and God bless you